Hello everyone and a very warm welcome to the CNBC TV 18.com and Quora present Unraveling D2C Trends, an exclusive online webinar with leading industry experts on the biggest consumer trends with the goal of enabling businesses to stay ahead of competition. Consumer commerce has witnessed a paradigm shift in the past few years. The new age customers are more demanding than ever and are constantly experimenting with new age brands through multiple touch points and channels. How can companies decode this volatile consumer behavior and also leverage the migration to the internet to flourish in the direct-to-consumer sector? Well, that's where we come in. Through the course of this discussion, we will shine the spotlight on the incredible direct-to-consumer journey that has been fueled by irreversible shifts in consumer behavior and also provide insights that will break new ground for your marketing efforts. Our experts on board today are the best in the business and will be sharing their views on the entire D2C spectrum and the latest industry trends. But before we deep dive into the discussion, I'd like to begin by introducing our esteemed panelists. We have with us Ms. Vanda Farrao, Chief Marketing Officer, Wow Skin Science. Vanda brings two decades of brand building experience across roles spanning foods, personal care, consumer healthcare, and retail across startups and large organizations. She is now also developing and implementing robust marketing strategies at the helm of Powerskin Science. We also have with us Mr. Deep Bajaj, founder, Sedona Hygiene. Deep is an award-winning social entrepreneur solving unaddressed hygiene problems faced by women. He founded Sedona Hygiene to offer innovative solutions that can impact the lives of women. And he also launched Peabody, a category-defining urination device for women. Next up is Mr. Shashank Mehta, founder and CEO of The Whole Truth Foods. Shashank is a self-taught fitness enthusiast on the mission to bring honesty back to food. He founded The Whole Truth Foods to make food clean and declared each and every ingredient up front. And that has literally changed the way we look at packaged food and also the way that they are marketed. Welcome to the show. We also have Mr. Pallav Roy, partner KPMG India. Pallav has around two decades of experience in delivering tangible value to consumer market sector clients in an increasingly digital future. He specializes in large end-to-end -end enterprise value transformation and addresses themes like growth, operations, analytics, and also digital enablement to improve valuation. And last but not the least, we also have Mr. Gurmeet Singh, General Manager, APAC and MEA at Quora. Mr. Singh is an industry stalwart. He has been the vice president and MD for Yahoo. Before joining Quora, he also had his own edtech startup called Ed Purple. He has been conferred with an honorary doctorate for his outstanding contribution in the internet and media space. So thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us today. It's great to have you all here with us. And we are truly looking forward to a very insightful discussion on the best strategies to address evolving needs of consumers. But before I begin and come to each one of you for questions, I would just like to bring in some numbers to set context. So the D2C market value was worth approximately 12 billion US dollars in the year 2022. And the same is projected to surpass the mark of 60 billion US dollars by the year 2027, growing at a CAGR of 40%. But to achieve this rather ambitious target, the sector also needs to transition to a more customized and omni-channel seamless approach. And here, a very important study comes in, and this was conducted by KPMG in association with Quora, and it analyzed consumer trends by leveraging Quora users across various categories in the D2C market. It reveals some very interesting insights about the new age millennial consumer. So I'd like to go in uh, towards Mr. Gurmeet Singh, uh, whom, I, as I mentioned before, he's general manager, uh, APAC and MEA from Quora, to understand the key highlights of the report. So, uh, Mr. Gurmeet, if you could share with us what are the biggest trends that you've been seeing on how new age brands engage with their customers versus the established legacy brands? Yeah, Thank, thanks, Ruchira. Um, basically, let's take uh, some names of uh, brands so that you know to understand uh, what I'm going to speak uh, better. So, legacy brands are brands like L'Oreal, J and J, uh, and Nivea. And new age D2C brands are brands like Mama Earth, Nika, Wow Life Sciences, and uh, the likes. So if you see legacy brands, legacy brands have been there for a while. 
Uh, therefore, they have established distribution channels and pretty high brand awareness. And this has helped them you know, scale in the past. However, uh, legacy brands, uh, given the they're pretty old, they are a little traditional in their thinking. Uh, so in this fast paced age where you know, the changes on uh, digital technology are happening by the day, it is very, very important to you know, keep pace with it and leverage uh, digital technology to you know, the best growth of your particular brand. Out here, we find that the new age D2C brands are very aggressive. Uh, they are very digital savvy and they have been maybe you know, building content online very, very well. If you see uh, the Quora KPMG D2C report that gets released today, one of the highlights is that in August 2022, the content consumption trends you know, changed drastically. Till August 2022, the legacy brands had the highest amount of content consumption online. In August 22 onwards, the new age D2C brands have kind of you know, taken over. So how has uh, this kind of happened? What are the factors that you know, Quora considers while doing all this analysis? Uh, so let's get into something called the CRE analysis, where C stands for curiosity, R stands for recommendation, and E for engagement. So how does Quora measure curiosity? Quora uh, has millions of questions you know, being posted every day. So the number of questions being posted are an indication of the curiosity of users. So if the number of questions are going up, that means the amount of curiosity is, is going up. And recommendations are counted by upvotes. So Quora has a provision by which you can upvote a particular answer. So if you're upvoting an answer, you're recommending it for others to kind of you know, go through. And the last one is user follows, which are a good indication of engagement, because if a user is following a particular topic or a particular answer, that means he would want to continue to be engaged with that. So the CRE analysis is something brilliant that you know, comes out in, in this particular uh, report. To conclude, basically, there is a fast pace of change that is happening on the digital front. Sure. Whether it is legacy brands or whether it is the new age D2C brands, the brands that can keep pace with it and, you know, exploit the opportunities that are available uh, to increase business through digital, in my opinion, they would emerge winners. Great. Thank you, Mr. Gurmeet. Uh, very interesting uh, points made by you over there. And coming to my next question, uh, you spoke about curiosity being measured by the trending topics. So uh, some huge topics and more uh, big dis uh, discussions on Quora are around beauty, skincare categories. So could you share some key actionable insights for D2C brands uh, that have come up through these conversations? Sure, Uchira. So if you see the Quora KPMG D2C report that gets uh, released today, the topics that have you know garnered a lot of attention are dermatology, hair loss, and beauty and cosmetics. So the one uh, people who have specific questions, you know, are the ones who are looking forward to, you know, personalized solutions. So for example, it could be customized skincare routines. It could be hair solutions as per hair type. It could be skin treatment as per specific needs. So these are the ones where, you know, D2C brands can actually pick up cues and come up with personalized solutions, uh, you know, for their users. The other ones is generic questions on topics like, you know, hair care, skin care, and beauty. Right. In my opinion, what D2C brand should do is, you know, pick up these questions and put them into these buckets. So, you know, hair care could be a bucket, beauty could be a bucket. So each particular uh, topic could have, let's say, seven to eight questions where you basically pick up the most asked questions, the most asked queries, and kind of, you know, try to address them through particular answers. And once you have, you know, these questions and answers kind of, you know, posted online on Quora, then you collect insights on what are the ones where the content consumption is higher. And once you pick up the ones where the content consumption is higher, those are the ones which we recommend should be amplified. So in conclusion, uh, what I would say is pick up insights from the report and from Quora, 
and amplify the ones which you know you think make kind of sense for your brand and that should be the way ahead great thank you uh, for sharing that uh, mr gurmeet uh, bringing you and mr pallav what are your key learnings from the cora kpmg report that you feel uh, consumer brands can use to pivot to growth uh, in the coming years thank you ruchira so if you see the findings of the report uh, one one thing you will really see that we have reached a stage of consumer commerce uh, what we mean by that is our consumers are exhibiting true omni channel behavior uh, and therefore there is a lot of um, you know similar kind of consumer values that you will see of convenience personalization uh values purpose and brands which are able to address them well will find a lot of space um and mind share and wallet share with consumers um obviously d2c brands have done uh, an excellent job of this and therefore they've made uh, space for themselves quite well at this stage uh, and over a period of time what we expect is uh, as you mentioned uh, even in the opening that the space is almost growing at about 40% chgr um, overall uh, this behavior is only likely to accelerate and uh, we believe that there has been a tectonic shift uh, in terms of a true omni channel uh, consumer and therefore d2c brands uh, have to make sure that they have an omni channel play and legacy brands have to make sure that they have an omni channel play which means the d2c brands have to find some space to step up on their offline game and on online d2c brands have uh, and legacy brands rather have to find a space to to play very well within the d2c space that's what we expect fully going forward mr palav i'd also like to understand from you how much of the digital surge during the pandemic uh, you think will sustain in the post pandemic world so today if you um, see a lot of um, publicly available data sources you will see that we are probably at about you know 7% uh, e-commerce is rather 7% of uh, the the entire retail sector and space we had there was some research that we had done during the pandemic as well and we saw yeah. that that number had surged almost to as high as 15 to 17% and that was simply because some of the other channels had gotten muted for most uh, consumers uh, post pandemic uh, like i mentioned uh, it has the tectonic shift has been in terms of um, you know an omni channel behavior that we are seeing consumer commerce is here to stay but there has been a lot of rebalancing in terms of the channels uh, and the value so some e-commerce going all the way up to 15 to 17% now uh, rebalanced to about an 8% growing at about 40% so if you see that is a clear sign that there has been a tectonic shift uh, it is rebalanced but it is only here to stay and accelerate all right well thank you so much gentlemen for breaking down the findings of the report for us beautifully and, and now i'd like to begin the panel discussion we have a lot of experts here and we can't wait to hear from them so uh, millennials of course as we all know are the biggest consumer base in the country and as per a very recent research the indian consumers have more online interaction with brands and companies rather than the global average with more than 50% indians actually preferring virtual experiences to real world experiences so clearly to leverage this as uh, both of you mentioned also mr gurmeet and uh, mr palav companies are integrating offline and online buying they utilizing social media marketing and deploying uh, various uh, tech enabled solutions to stay engaged with the customers so the brands going forward need to succeed in a highly competitive d2c market and they need to provide a a uh, personalized and tailored experience so to begin the discussion i'd like to come to you mr deep in accordance uh, with invest india's analysis of the personal hygiene market it, that is projected to grow uh, you know to uh, us 15 billion dollars by the year 2023 in india and the primary factors backing this projection are rise in awareness also and easy access to information so could you take us through your uh, personal growth journey at serona and how are you driving conversations around feminine hygiene no thank you for having me so you know the category where sirona operates uh, you know there is a lot of taboo around 
these topics. So we talk about menstrual health, we talk about intimate health, uh, we're looking at toilet hygiene, and these are largely neglected areas uh, for women in the country. And hence, uh, you know, ATL doesn't have a lot of uh, mind share when it comes to these topics. So digital became uh, a natural playground for us to start conversations. And sure. that, in a way, has uh, been the single largest growth factor in the Sirona journey, where we were able right. to use social media and even platforms like Quora uh, to an extent uh, to start conversations around these topics and create communities where women can discuss uh, these issues far more openly. So I think we're still scratching the surface. Uh, right. We're opening up uh, and it's a very interesting time to be in a category like ours because now women are far more open to discussing this and now there are platforms as well where you can go and find solutions to your unaddressed issues. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, coming to you, Ms. Vanda, uh, as Mr. Gurmeet also mentioned, beauty and skincare product users are very active and they're looking for root cause elimination of problem rather than quick fixes. And according to the report, users actively look for products and treatments for sustainable hair growth. And this topic has significant potential for user engagement. So how are you using these insights to grow? And what are your thoughts on this? Um, a little bit about Wow Skin Science. We are one of the leading D2C players in the beauty and healthcare space. And we make offerings uh, based on strong ingredients, which are a success. And we make these offerings for the aspiring young digital India. I use these words uh, very specifically because uh, the traits shown by these Gen Z and millennials is very different. And how they actually manifest this behavior on digital has given rise to, you know, the success of uh, brands like us. And taking, uh, you know, a leaf from what Gurmeet said, the word he oft used, which is curiosity, right? I want to build on it to be able to give you a flavor of uh, how we are seeing these trends pan out. The first sure. one is consumer curiosity. Increasingly, this digital audience is going to uh, sources online to be able to find out answers for concerns. Once upon a time, you used to go to your family friend or, uh, you know, to known people, but the internet, especially forums like Quora, are a strong platform for you to seek answers. So the consumers are getting curious, they're going and checking it online, and that results in a lot of keywords, search volumes, etc. The second curiosity is brands like Wow. We are curious. So we are constantly seeking these trends. We are seeing where is their potential to make something big. Uh, so we are always seeking, uh, we are seeing social media, we are seeing search trends, we are seeing platforms like Quora to be able to see the next green shoots. I'll give you an example. Uh, many years back, uh, four years back, we saw there were some uh, mentions and tractions of apple cider vinegar. India didn't yes. know what apple cider vinegar was, but we said, okay, there is a potential to make this big. Uh, hence, uh, we launched uh, our offerings, which were really, really strong formulations, and we rode the wave. So we built on the search trends, we came up with really good formulations, and we also built demand for this over a point of time. And that has resulted in this really, really taking off. So I would believe curiosity is the bedrock of this change, which is actually happening. Great. Thank you. Very pertinent point made by you there about leveraging, uh, you know, customer curiosity to actually develop new products. That's that's a great insight there. Coming to you, Mr. Shashank, uh, Indians particularly rely on social media, as the report suggests. And uh, that's also suggested by the Quora user data. So how is your company, The Whole Truth Foods, utilizing this trend to connect with customers using relevant and specific content? Content in social media has become this big thing for millennials and Gen Z. I think it's not something surprising because we believe that, you know, every generation chooses some dominant medium to become their source of how they view the world and where they find answers. Uh, and unfortunately, in the space that we operate, which broadly is the health and fitness space, we believe that journalism has vacated that space. Uh, people are unable to find answers which they can trust uh, uh, in popular news and media because it's all become six ways to get eight pack abs in Deepika Padukone's work workout, which helps no one. Uh, that's the space we felt as a brand that we can own. Uh, uh, because, you know, the brand The Whole Truth was born out of a blog that I used to write 
uh, before I started up, which was a health and fitness blog where I where I used to do exactly this. I would, as a normal guy who was struggling with obesity and learning answers, I would just share whatever it is that I was learning without any, uh, you know, monetary agenda or without any political affiliation. Uh, I was just right. giving it to you. Sir, and and I think consumers are yearning for brands to be like normal human beings who are experts in one zone or the other and give it to them straight. Uh, and right. if you can, there's a massive playing field of trust, which has been left empty by big brands and journalism, everyone, which is what we're feeling through our content on social media. All right. Great. Um, very important uh, insights there. Mr. Gurmeet, I'd like to come to you here. Uh, as mentioned by him, there is an overall upward trend in uh, total views on content around healthy snacks, healthy food. And this, of course, uh, shows a huge potential for brands in this category. So going forward, how can uh, brands leverage these conversations on Quora this year and the coming years? Yeah, Ruchira. So first, uh, I would kind of, you know, tend to agree with what uh, Vanda said in terms of, you know, curiosity and how uh, today's generation is completely into digital and very, very, you know, curious about finding out uh, more. And Quora is a place where actually people come to share the knowledge and not only share the knowledge, but also kind of, you know, grow it. And one of the hottest topics uh, is health and, you know, related and uh, you know, Shashank also, you know, spoke about this. Uh, uh, he's an expert in this area, but I can uh, talk about, you know, how brands can kind of leverage it in two ways. One, you know, given that the uh, D2C user is, is very discerning, uh, it is very, very important to whet the curiosity by educating uh, the user. One of the good ways what we recommend is, you know, taking higher ground on, on this. And uh, also through that, kind of educate the user on what are the you know benefits, what are the benefits of the particular product, and how it could be kind of you know relevant to them and uh, to their likes. So sure. growing uh, content that kind of educates is, should be you know priority number one. Second, uh, if you were to you know if you wish to leverage Quora, Quora is a place where there is a huge amount of machine learning which is there. How do you leverage this machine learning, not only on Quora, but any other platform which you would want to be to kind of reach out to more and more people and the right people? So one of the ways in which you can reach out to the right audiences, you know, whether it is health or otherwise, is topics and keywords. So if you, you know, pick up topics and keywords that are relevant to you, let's say nutrition, health, oatmeal, green tea, whatever it is, uh, ML can give you a lot of topics that have affinity to these uh, topic. And therefore, you know, online is a good, good place to kind of find them. The second way is contextual. A, a lot of platforms, including Quora, mm -hmm. allow you to target the user as the user reads. So, for example, if you're reading about a health food, uh, brands can actually convey the message in that particular moment when the user is reading and that's called kind of contextual targeting uh, parallel to that is interest based targeting where you see the interest of the user in the last 30 days and say okay so and so user has been interested in health related topics so let's kind of address this kind of product to them so that's another way in which kind of brands can reach out and then right. how do you kind of amplify this by you know lookalikes and also retargeting uh, in conclusion um, i would say that Insights, collecting insights is, is the key to all of this. So whichever channel, whether it's Quora or elsewhere you're working with, you know, approach the teams and most people have teams in Delhi, Bombay, Bangalore, collect the insights and use those insights to kind of, you know, fine tune your marketing strategy. Sure. Uh, Mr. Pallav, uh, what additional metrics do you think brands and companies can track to improve their performance when it comes to this space? Yeah, uh, thanks. I think uh, that was a good question. <clears throat> like, as I said, uh, we've uh, fully arrived into this era of uh, consumer commerce uh, and omnichannel. Uh, I would say the metrics that need to be really measured um, have to be different by channel. So if you are a D2C company, you would obviously try to see what kind of uh, 
organic search traffic you can get, um, you know, how your lead flow is coming through, what are the qualified leads, how will you convert them, how will you service them, what kind of supply chain are you running so that your tax are maintained, uh, what unique economics you're running, it'll be all in that nature. Uh, if you are running an offline channel, then of course, it will be completely different. You will measure your numeric distribution. <clears throat> you will obviously try and understand um, how many outlets, whether any dropped outlets, uh, how can you enhance uh, your presence in them? Can you move to a replenishment model? Uh, what ATL, BTL schemes you're running to ensure that is there. So essentially, I think there are these two different channels uh, that are essentially operating. And I think metrics need to be actually aligned with the kind of channel that you're running. So I think that's number one. Number two is we are talking about a space of hyper-personalization. In a space of hyper-personalization, you should be able to actually measure fulfillment, promotion, schemes, engagement at a consumer level, not at an aggregate level. Uh, so I think a lot of metrics need to move in that direction. And third, I see that there's a lot of evolution. If you see even platforms like Quora, uh, you'll see that it has a lot of images, it has a lot of text, um, there are voices and videos that is there on social media. And I think that there is, you know, still some distance to go before we can actually run credible analytics with that um, to right. gain insight and, and act on them. So in my view, uh, you know, fit for uh, purpose metrics uh, to the channel, uh, translating back uh, to the business and the operating model that you have. Um, right. personalization, granularity at a consumer level. And third is, you know, looking at new age ways to look at analytics for voice video text. Great. So personalization is definitely going to lead the way forward. Uh, I'd like to come to you, Ms. Vanda. There's been an increased interest and adoption uh, in D2C brands uh, that promote clean, organic, plant-based or eco-friendly products. So do you think uh, consumers are more aware than ever and committed to using products that are good for the body as well as the environment? Yes, Ruchira, there is an increasing interest uh, in, uh, in clean beauty, in no nasties and good for the environment. And uh, we can't brush it aside as saying it's just woke and it's lip service. Uh, Indians today, the ones who are WOW's target audience, right, the young uh, millennials, they embrace yeah. brands which have values which resonate with them. And what you've said also is something which they strongly feel about. We saw where this was panning out uh, many years back and we've built up brands on the bedrock of this. Uh, we are a brand which is uh, no nasties, which is good for you. And we genuinely deliver products with work. And over time, we've seen that it is increasingly being adopted and loved by our consumers. Also, in terms of sustainability, right, uh, the youth nowadays, uh, the young early jobbers are really concerned about what's happening to the environment. And we've seen that whenever we've made these baby steps, for example, we've uh, gone with um, uh, packaging for our vitamin C range, which is paper based. And there have been increasing uh, takers for that. And there's been a lot of love uh, from consumers for us for taking that effort. So I think uh, there is a trend. I would say it's going to be, it's, it's a movement. And um, Young India today will seek brands which, uh, you know, uh, build on these values. Great. Uh, most of you spoke about uh, how D2C brands are expanding beyond digital channels, spreading their footprint across offline channels as well, as consumers need multiple touch points to interact. So uh, coming to you, Mr. Shashank, how are you scaling up and preparing for the adoption of this omni-channel strategy, which is now a very, very critical? So absolutely. I think uh, calling a brand a D2C brand is actually a misnomer. Brands are brands and D2C is a channel. Uh, and I believe consumers shop everywhere. A uh, shopping machine can start on my website and end on Amazon or start in a retail store and end on my website and everything in between. Uh, we've always told the company to be an omni-channel company. We build products and propositions which work for consumers, no matter where consumers buy it from. Uh, the only difference is your go-to market and hence, you know, how do you build that channel out is very different depending on whether it's a B2B or a B2C channel. And 
how do you bring your proposition alive at the point of purchase whether it's an amazon or a retail store or a website that varies dramatically because the amount of information you can share in different channels is different but eventually it's the same consumer who can start and end their shopping journey you know from anywhere to anywhere so you have to make sure that you have one consistent message which goes across so that they don't see any discrepancy in different channels when they interact with your brand all right so uh mr deep uh, i'd like to bring you in here uh, as per cora data in the personal hygiene space particularly the topic on sanity is very high on the list and consumer interest in non conventional feminine products has been rising significantly so if you could tell us how are you uh, creating content customized content to capture these trends no so it's true uh, and like i think it has been said earlier that now digital world is the new family uh, when it comes to any you know personal hygiene intimate hygiene topic that you want to discuss so uh, and we've seen this trend when it comes to modern feminine hygiene solutions especially the menstrual cup you know when we mm-hmm. introduced menstrual cups about 5 years ago uh, there were a lot of uh, notions around which were you know which which stem back uh, decades that uh, you know it it can impact virginity uh, there are other issues around whether it should be used not used but i think the digital community for us uh, came to our rescue as as digital brand ambassadors and uh, they themselves started talking about their experience with the product and breaking the myths and and we took cues from these uh, questions as well as answers and started creating expert uh, content through doctor videos through through expert blogs where we were, we started talking about alternates to what uh, you know the community already had uh, as solutions mm-hmm. to use and uh, that worked uh, a long way because for the first 4 years of sirona's journey we barely raised any big amount of funding so we purely built it on community talking about these issues on uh, content platforms all right okay um coming to you uh, mr gurmeet according to uh, euro monitor voice of consumer survey 2022 more than 50% consumers uh, prefer virtual experiences and uh, millennials are 70% of the sample size and they form the largest consumer base in india according to cia world factbook so while they are willing to share their personal data and have personalized engagements how can d2c brands innovate to provide a seamless and a more fruitful experience and yet achieve their business objective simply and cost effectively yeah ruchira so as uh, wanda very rightly said that you know and shashank also double up saying that you know the values need to kind of match so d2c brand if you see the very name d2c stands you know direct to uh, consumer so they how do they differ from the erstwhile legacy brand the erstwhile legacy brands would offer you know whatever they had and you know consumers had to accept it whereas d2c brands offer very specific benefits and uh, solutions therefore the user of you know d2c brands is, is very discerning uh, the millennial user is very discerning and not very easily convinced uh, he or she needs a lot of data points and educational content to kind of you know figure out whether the product is right for them or not and online is a great uh, place to kind of find them you know while omni channel is of course a must for both legacy as well as uh, d2c brands but right. a good source of information nowadays is you know content online which is there which is you know playing a very very increased uh, role and deep also spoke in detail about it how you know sirona is kind of leveraging that so insights become the foremost uh, starting point for uh, brands to kind of you know stay ahead mm-hmm. uh, if you see the search topics uh, in the cora kpmg report that kind of gets released today dermatology like i said uh, is one of the you know key topics that's kind of surging so there's hair loss there's beauty and cosmetic these are search topics if you see dental hygiene feminine hygiene these are again search topics where there is a lot of curiosity and there is a lot of information which is being sought and shared on these topics mm-hmm. then there are some evergreen topics you know which which will always be there like face makeup and personal grooming uh, these are evergreen topics and will continue to uh, garner interest as we kind of go along the solutions can of course be personalized cat food is another search topic uh, which is there so in conclusion what i would say is it's very very important 
to you know get your insights in place and like we all also you know the speakers spoke earlier about personalization and you yourself mentioned uh, ruchira that how personalization is very very important so once you have the insights with you uh then the next step of formulating your media strategy and marketing strategy will help kind of b2c brand stay ahead all right thank you mr gurmeet uh, definitely as you mentioned insights are going to be crucial for any d2c brand that wants to succeed in the currently competitive space uh, i'd like to bring in uh, mr pallar right now um, online shopping as we all agree and has as we've all seen has become a way of life and brands are integrating online sales channels to ensure a seamless shopping experience but research also shows that customers are more likely to continue using a channel only if minimum effort is required whether it is physical or emotional so do you think there is a foolproof strategy so to say to master this uh, omni channel user interface so that that's a very good question and um, in fact the most important thing what consumers are looking for uh is is really their preference of channel uh, as they see it right um and from that sense uh, the only true way to look at it is to first create a true omni channel play for any brand that is step number 1 uh step number 2 is to clearly understand the shopping mission uh the customer journey and carefully construct the experience that you want to land for the consumer Uh, to make sure that the customer experience across different channels is not very highly distorted or is not very diverse or different uh, from each other and the third one is that irrespective of which uh, channel the consumer has actually picked up try and see whether you can sustain and maintain the same levels of personalization or engagement with the consumer so i think if we ad addressed these three things for the consumer uh, for the mm -hmm. true um omni channel consumer that we are seeing uh, those strategies should really hold good for uh, consumer stickiness and some bit of consumer loyalty for sure great thank you uh, so much ladies and gentlemen but one last question for each one of you uh, your companies have succeeded in a very competitive space and uh, now that we're talking to uh, our audience and other d2c brands do you think you have a success mantra that you want to share with our audience that they can use as an actionable insight to promote their brand uh, i'd like to begin with you ms vanda um i have three things to say the first one which has been the center of today's uh, uh, discussion which is be curious always see what consumers are seeking and uh, get products which cater to the need uh the second one is it's very easy in your curiosity to build on a trend but ensure it just doesn't die of fad and you continue growing your franchise and as you scope the next million to use your product you have a strong proposition you have a strong product and uh the third thing is build uh an offering which has uh, on strong values which resonate with the consumer and that will ensure that you have uh, a strong brand All right. Great. Thank you for sharing that success mantra, Miss Vanda. Mr. Shashank, what is your insight and advice here? Uh, I think my success mantra or the way I operate in life is: I think start up, start a brand in a place where you are the consumer, and you will never spend even a second trying to guess what the consumer wants to know because you will feel it in your bones. All right. Great. Great advice, uh, Mr. Deep. What is your insight? let's say don't uh, be scared to take the road less traveled and just listen to your customers they'll show you the way great mr gurmeet what's yours i uh, kind of agree with what uh, deep is saying that you know listen to your customer and the best way to listen to your customer is you know to follow the trends to dig deep get those insights and the second most important thing in my opinion is just once you have those insights you amplify what is uh, you know required to take you make you successful or make the brand successful sure uh coming to you mr palak for your closing comments what is your full proof strategy or advice to the d2c brands so essentially most brands to recognize that their um, consumers uh, are operating in an omni channel way 
uh, to focus on that. Uh, personalization uh, is is extremely key for such consumers. Um, mm. the speed of innovation of products uh, associated mm. with the purpose and values that the consumers associate with uh, become mm. extremely key and and critical. Uh, and last but not the least, you know, the supply chain which needs to fulfill um, all of this needs to be brought together in a in a meaningful way. Uh, so that the consumer can finally experience the brand uh, in in a sense of speed, in a in a spe uh, in a sense of values, in a sense of purpose that they're looking for. So those would be some of my um, key views that I'd like to leave behind. Those have been the key insights that we saw also from the Cora KPMG report. Great, thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for your extremely invaluable inputs. Uh, on unraveling the current and upcoming D2C trends. And just to sum up for our audience, uh, clearly in the coming years, we can expect more focus on multiple touch points, uh, personalized communication, and customer feedback centric solutions, as mentioned by all our panelists. And if they leverage these trends, then definitely Indian D2C brands can build a solid and large consumer base going forward. So thank you all for watching and thank you to our panelists for joining in. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for having us.